In today's video, we have Furrier showcasing the capabilities of their humanoid robot GR1, capable of carrying a load of 50 kilograms. The United States, which issued the first fine for polluting Earth's orbit with space debris. India, which is set to launch a mission to Venus as early as next year. A flying sedan, which was shown live for the first time as well as a unique method of scientists from the United States who have found a way to control fuel vapors. All this and much more in this issue. Let's get started. Let's start today's video from space. The Federal Communications Commission issued the first ever fine in history for polluting Earth's orbit with space debris. The amount of $150,000, according to the regulator's decision, must be paid by the American satellite TV provider, Dish Network Corporation, which failed to properly deorbit a broadcasting satellite last year. Instead of moving the end-of-life satellite Echo Star 7 to a disposal orbit, Dish sent it to an orbit lower than required by the license terms, which could have caused issues with orbital debris, stated the FCC. Initially, Echo Star 7 was in a geostationary orbit at an altitude of about 36,000 kilometers above the planet, much higher than low Earth orbit satellites like Starlink. However, it couldn't be transitioned to a burial orbit. As a result, Echo Star 7 ended up closer to the operational orbits of other geostationary satellites than specified in the regulator's requirements. By finding DISH Network, the Commission demonstrated its readiness to restrict the activities of other satellite constellations. As satellite operations become increasingly commonplace and the space economy accelerates, we must be sure that operators comply with their obligations, said the head of the regulatory bureau. Continuing the theme of space, let's move to India. The country has developed equipment for a mission to Venus in 2024. The Indians are eager to launch this mission next year. Otherwise, the convenient window for the launch will only be in 2031. The Venusian mission was previously planned for December 2024, so that the station would enter Venus's orbit in 2025, when Earth and Venus are at their closest. The Shukrayaan-1 probe will study the chemical composition of the atmosphere, conduct stratigraphy, and investigate the interaction between solar wind and Venus's ionosphere. In just a couple of months this year, India has successfully executed two missions, sending a rover to the moon and launching an automatic station for solar research at DTIA L1. Moving back to Earth, while the Tesla Optimus robot demonstrates new sorting and balancing capabilities on one leg, the company Furrier Intelligence has released a new video showcasing the production process of its super-strong humanoid robot GR1. The video shows not only the assembly of the robots, but also the winding of coils and special drives, rows of 3D printers for manufacturing body parts, individual arms that mimic human movements on a test bench, and a device apparently designed to control the robot. The video comes after Agility announced that its Robofab facility in Oregon would become the world's first factory for manufacturing humanoid robots, with the capacity to assemble up to 10,000 devices annually. Furrier aims to send 100 of its GR1 robots to its first clients by the end of the year. Meanwhile, Tesla, the third player in this field, has not yet discussed mass production of its Optimus androids. The arms and hands of GR1 may appear fragile, but the company claims it doesn't hinder the robot from carrying a load of up to 50 kilograms. Fourier plans to use the robot as an assistant in rehabilitation therapy. Handles will be placed on its waist to help people rise from wheelchairs and beds. However, Fourier is collaborating with several research and development partners to gain diverse perspectives on the robot's training and development. Tesla, on the other hand, is independently working on autonomous operations and improving the capabilities of its androids. Thanks to high-tech computers used in Tesla's full self-driving autopilot system, Optimus can now precisely determine the positions of its hands and legs, calibrating their placement in space simply by looking at them. The company claims that this self-calibration system helps the robot efficiently learn new tasks. Both for Optimus and GR1, walking remains challenging. The situation might change in the coming years, considering the significant investments flowing into this sector. Meanwhile, the Chinese have launched high-speed trains across the sea. They connect the cities of Fuzhou and Xiamen, the largest port on the Taiwan Strait Coast. The total length of the route is 277 kilometers, with a part of it of 19 kilometers 900 meters running directly over the sea, making it the country's first overwater high-speed transport. Trains rush over the water at a maximum speed of 350 kilometers per hour, allowing passengers to admire the local beauty. 
The travel time between the two points is 55 minutes. Previously, it took people at least one hour and 20 minutes to travel from Fuzhou to Xiamen Port. In the port city, the road doesn't end. Tracks continue further to Zhangzhou. The journey crosses three coastal bays, Zhuanshu Bay, Maishou Bay, and Anhai Bay, via bridges that engineers claim were extremely challenging to construct. Scientists from the United States have found a way to control fuel combustion by developing a new, safer fuel that only burns under specific conditions. In the combustion process, it's not the liquid fuel itself that burns, but the volatile molecules accumulating above the surface coming into contact with oxygen and fire. If oxygen access is cut off, the flame will extinguish, but doing so outside the engine is challenging. The basis of the new fuel created at the University of California is an ionic liquid, which is a liquid salt. It has a lower melting point than table salt and low vapor pressure. Additionally, chemists modified its formula. When scientists attempted to ignite the ionic liquid with a lighter's flame, no ignition occurred. Then when they applied voltage along with the lighter's flame, the liquid caught fire. As soon as the current was cut off, the flame extinguished. Scientists repeated the process several times, observing the same result. In theory, ionic liquid could be used in various types of vehicles. Moreover, it can be mixed with regular fuel, making it non-flammable. However, the exact ratios are yet to be determined. The Flying Sedan Model A from Aleph Aeronautics has been shown live for the first time. This is one of those cases where no one believed the renders and concepts, but the manufacturer managed to bring the idea to life. Sales of the world's first fully functional flying car will begin in 2025. Information about the car first appeared in October 2022. The world was skeptical about Aleph Aeronautics' idea, perceiving it as a concept that was unlikely to materialize. However, the skepticism was unwarranted. The car's body resembles a classic automobile. At first glance, you wouldn't think this vehicle can fly, but upon closer inspection, you can see that the prototype's hood features a mesh grille. Through the mesh, four electric propellers are visible. In addition to the propellers, there are regular wheels. This means the car can both drive and fly. There is also a convertible mode. The roof folds back, allowing the passenger and driver to enjoy the scenery from above. The car's design was developed by Hiraishi Rizagi, who previously worked on interiors for Bugatti and Jaguar cars. In the summer of 2023, ALF Aeronautics CEO announced that their startup became the first among similar projects to receive an airworthiness certificate from the Federal Aviation Administration, enabling the company to begin flight tests. Write in the comments which of the technology news releases impressed you the most. If you found something new and interesting in this video, don't forget to like it and subscribe to the Caro Show channel. Also, check out our previous videos. See you later.